I have a great job. I wake up every morning and the first thing I want to do, even before breakfast, is get to work. Meet Terry Fong, the man who's helping to make NASA relevant again. His mission doesn't require him to wear an astronaut suit or even to break the sound barrier. The space shuttle program is long gone. This is the new breed of NASA, and the future is robotic. I just love the idea that the, the work we're doing here at NASA Ames is going to reinvent the way we do planetary exploration. In truth, robots are not new to NASA. They've been a part of the team since Sojourner launched into space nearly 20 years ago. But this is the first time all eyes have been focused on them. And it's not a question of human or robot. The question is, how can we best combine human and robots? For example, we don't have a lander that we can use to take humans all the way to the surface of Mars. But we know we can put robots there. And we're going to use this whole robot here to, to do work. It's an exciting time for Terry, who's been enthusiastic about building robots ever since he wandered into the space lab at MIT. He was instantly hooked. That really opened up this whole you know, world of robots to me. And that really gave me this passion for figuring out, could I build robots that do more than just act as a, as a tool? And it's important that we work right in this space. Fast forward to today, and Terry is still as passionate as an undergrad. The big difference is now he's the director of the Robotics Intelligence Group at NASA Ames. There, Terry has overseen the design and construction of some of the most advanced robots around. The best thing about robots for me is that uh, there's no limit to what they can possibly do. The Curiosity rover mission is going to explore the surface of Mars in ways that we've never been able to before. Closer to Earth, on the space station, there's the Robonaut 2, which is a humanoid robot, so it has two arms and fingers, and it can pick up and manipulate objects like you and I can. There's also a free-flying robot on space station called Spheres. They're carrying smartphones. We're using it uh, as a robot processor to allow the robots to do more on space station. And to me, that's just really exciting. Back at NASA Ames, another of Terry's robots is looking to make big strides in space without ever leaving Earth. K-10 is a four-wheeled robot that's carried lots of different science instruments. We've had everything from ground penetrating radars to 3D laser scanners uh, and spectrometers on it to understand how you can use mobile robots in ways that they've never been done before. Since the K-10 has not yet journeyed into space, Terry's team did the next best thing and brought Mars to the robot. There's only so much we can do in the laboratory to simulate uh, the real world or to simulate other planets. And one of the reasons why we go to the Arizona desert the Canadian Arctic, uh, places in Washington state, is to go to places that have characteristics which are similar to the moon or Mars. And in a way, the K-10 will edge even closer to space next summer. Astronauts aboard the International Space Station will attempt to remotely operate the robot while it's stationed at NASA Ames. I've just been really fortunate to help develop these because I think they're going to change the way we think about exploring other planets. Although Terry realizes there's no guarantee that that experiment will work. Because if you think about it, having astronauts in space means, well, there's no gravity, so they're, they're floating in space. They can't have a direct view of the robot, so all has to be communicated through a user interface. However, this type of challenge is exactly what drives Terry to find new ways to improve NASA's robots. You know, I'm always asking myself, how can we take robots and push them further? How can we do more with them? Doing that job is a really interesting and really fun thing, frankly, for us to do. To me, you know, the future is just full of possibilities.